Getting started with smart home technology can seem daunting because of all the options and variables involved. HomeKit is the best ecosystem for your home if you use iPhones, iPads, and Macs every day for your work and personal computing needs and you're familiar with these devices. Adding new gadgets and managing them with the Home app or Siri is a breeze with Apple's setup. But what should one do first to begin working with HomeKit? Let's have a deep look at getting started with HomeKit in 2023. What is a HomeKit? HomeKit is Apple's smart home platform, and it is designed to give you control over a wide variety of internet-connected home devices, ranging from thermostats and plugs to window blinds, light bulbs, and more using an Apple device. HomeKit was developed so that you can control all of these devices with your iOS or Mac OS device. You've probably heard the phrase Internet of Things before because in today's world, an increasing number of products can be connected to the Internet. The Internet of Things is a jumbled collection of smart products that connect to the Internet and can be controlled by a variety of different platforms such as Google Home, Samsung Smart Things, and Amazon Alexa. This collection of smart products can be described as a confusing mix. What do you want to achieve with HomeKit? Your home can be made more intelligent in so many different ways, but the first step on your journey toward a smart home will be to determine what you hope to accomplish with Apple's HomeKit platform. Do you intend to install a HomeKit security system, or would you like to upgrade to smart lights? Do you want to be able to drive up to your house and have the garage door open automatically? Or do you want a smart thermostat that will turn the heat on when the temperature in your home drops below a certain point? These things are all possible with HomeKit, but you need to answer some of these questions to determine which devices you should equip your home with initially. HomeKit makes it possible to do all of these things. You also need to consider which areas of your home you want HomeKit devices in and whether or not you want to be able to control your smart home devices even when you aren't there. If the latter is the case, then you need to give some serious consideration to the former. Building your new smart home. It is recommended that you do this before adding a lot of accessories to the Home app because the app's interface quickly becomes cluttered with icons if you do not divide your home into different rooms before adding a lot of accessories. The Home app allows you to divide your home into different rooms. Additionally, devices frequently take on similar names by default when they're initially added to the app. This means that it is possible to end up with multiple lights called the bulb, which makes it extremely challenging to manage in the long run. If you already have an idea of the kinds of devices you want to install, the next step is to consider the rooms in which each device, sensor, and hub will be located. You will want to check that the home app contains a room that corresponds to the one you just created. These can be added or removed at any time, but if you take the time to sort out this step up front, it will make organizing your accessories within the home app a lot simpler in the future. At this point in time, it's probably worth adding family members to your home so that you are not the only person in charge of the technological aspects of this smart home. Get the appropriate home kit hubs. When you begin looking into HomeKit for the first time, you will most likely come across the term hub quite a bit. This word can refer to a few different things depending on the context. To begin, HomeKit compatibility with certain devices is contingent upon the installation of an additional hub. If you want to control your smart lighting with the Home app or Siri, you must first set up the Philips Hue Bridge, the company's hub device. Philips Hue makes some of the most popular smart lighting devices, but you can't control them unless you have the Philips Hue bridge. In a similar vein, inexpensive Akara HomeKit sensors are ideal for dotting around your home. 
However, in order to communicate with your Apple devices, each of these sensors requires a hub, such as Acara's M2. Read the product descriptions to determine if a specific hub is needed. If you only plan to buy one device from a brand and need to spend a lot on the hub, it may be worth considering a hub-free option. A hub is worth the investment if you plan to buy multiple devices from the same brand. Bridge devices are becoming rarer. Once the Matter standard is widely adopted, it should go away for new devices. But until then, be aware of hubs and bridges. HomeKit hubs are another use of a hub. These are needed to control HomeKit devices away from home. If you already own Apple products, you can quickly turn your Apple TV, iPad, or HomePod into a HomeKit hub. Add your devices. It is finally time to take the plunge into the world of HomeKit once you have determined where in your home your HomeKit technology will be utilized. Once you have prepared your home app in advance, and once you have determined which devices and hubs you are going to need to purchase. Adding hardware to a HomeKit network is a relatively simple process. The majority of manufacturers will include a QR code label on each device, which can be scanned utilizing the camera function within the Home app itself. After that, the app will walk you through the remainder of the pairing process, which includes naming the device and associating it with a specific room in the house. If the product requires a hub device, it is recommended that you begin with that first. Before a device can be controlled through the home app, it may first require initial configuration through the app provided by the device's manufacturer. In some cases, this must be done before the device can be managed through the home app. Make sure you carefully read any documentation that comes with the product before using it. Regardless, having the manufacturer's app available for things like firmware updates and the like is almost always convenient to have. If you decide to go down the rabbit hole of having a smart home, you should be aware that you will eventually need to replace your light bulbs. You will see the controls for your HomeKit compatible devices in the Home app on your iPhone, iPad, or Mac. You will also be able to control them with your voice using Siri. This is true regardless of the method you use to add your devices. Both the Home app and the app developed by the manufacturer will share the same version of their current status. Set your favorite HomeKit devices. Even though it may sound ridiculous, creating favorites within the Home app can be a useful feature. Let's face it, some of the devices you add to HomeKit will be more important than others, and they will require you to interact with them more frequently than others will. Some of the others are of the set it and forget it variety of electronic devices. The Home app will then be able to have your most used accessories readily available choose to designate them as favorites. They will also be visible in the control center on all of your other Apple devices. This occurs when you select a device as a favorite in the settings menu. In addition, you'll be able to quickly access these accessories through your Apple Watch. Create some automation. The ability to program certain routines and automation is among the many benefits of having HomeKit devices. When this occurs, it is as if you are living in an episode of the Jetsons, because things take place without you having to press a button or give an order. It's possible to automate your devices using a wide variety of triggers, such as the time of day, your location, the activation of a sensor, or the current state of an accessory. Each of these triggers is able to set other devices in motion. HomeKit automation can be created with the help of our comprehensive guide. Nevertheless, some straightforward examples include synchronizing the turning on and off of lights with sunrise and sunset, or lowering the temperature setting on the thermostat when you're not home. The use of these is, of course, entirely voluntary, 
However, they can reduce the amount of manual labor involved in the management of your home and enhance the quality of your experience. What do you think of the video? Let us know about your favorite part of the video in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more home automation videos, subscribe and leave a comment saying I subscribed. I will personally reply to your comment. See you next time and thanks for watching.